prepare you for the Bible studies of the coming year. Next year, you'll be a faithful learner of the Word of God in Jesus' name. We're going to stand up and we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this blessed moment together. Thank you for the joy of studying your word. And thank you for the life you give us as we study your word. Thank you for the privilege today and for your faithful children, brothers and sisters. In the youth section, in the children's section, in the adult section. Lord, we pray you give us understanding in the study and the learning of your word tonight in Jesus' name. Help us to develop an interest in studying your word, a passion for studying your word, a desire for wanting to know what is the wisdom of Christ and the mind of God and what he has preserved for us in the revelation of the word. Lord, we pray tonight you help us to understand. Give us the key of understanding and the understanding of your word will bear fruit in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Give me a good, good amen. Thank you very much. You can sit down. Matthew chapter 5. We come to Matthew chapter 5. Jesus Christ is Savior. Jesus Christ is our Messiah. Jesus Christ is our Shepherd. But Jesus Christ is also our teacher. You need to understand from the Bible that Jesus Christ was recognized as a teacher in John chapter 3. John chapter 3. I'm reading to you from verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, that means master, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. We know thou art a teacher come from God because no man can affirm and confirm and demonstrate the truth of what he teaches like you do with miracles. We know therefore you are a teacher come from God. And the teaching of Jesus Christ influence not just the head or the brain or the mind or the emotion of the people. The teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ stirred them up in their hearts. Luke chapter 23. In Luke chapter 23 verse 5, and they were the more fierce, saying, he stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. Whenever Jesus touched the people, he stirred up their hearts. He aroused their mind that they will want to serve the Lord by the teaching that he gave them and his method of teaching was different from the teaching of the scribes and Pharisees. Matthew chapter 7. In Matthew chapter 7, reading from verse 28 and verse 29, And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them 
as one having authority and not as the scribes. You will see then that Jesus was a master teacher. He was a teacher like no other teacher. And it's the teaching of Christ we're looking at tonight. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Actually, Jesus had been teaching what is called the Beatitudes. Because he said in verse 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, the lowly in spirit. Woe unto the proud in spirit, for blessed are the poor in spirit, the humble in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they that mourn. The people that mourn where there is sin. Like Jeremiah, my eyes drop down of the tears because they do not obey your word. Like the psalmist, my weeping for my tears, they wet my bed every night because of the people that do not obey your word. Blessed are they that mourn. Woe unto them that laugh at iniquity. But blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, the gentle, the meek, the tender, the compassionate, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled when we're thirsty after righteousness. And our passion, our hunger, our desire, is for righteousness. It says, such people will be filled. And blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. The peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. Now, every time you read that, you understand the opposite is also true. Woe unto the peace takers, the troubleshooters, and the troublemakers, because they'll not get to the kingdom of God. For blessed are the peacemakers, because they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all oh, manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward. In heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And it's in the conclusion of these beatitudes that he began to tell the believers. The believers are the people to carry out and to live the beatitudes out in their lives. And he said, Ye are the salt of the earth, sweeten your community. Contribute something sweet to your community. Ye are the salt of the earth, not the sugar. Only sweet, but cannot heal the wounds. But you know salt is sweet, but it will also heal the wounds. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savour, 
a sweetness, a saltiness, where we eat shall it be salted. It is meant for good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. It's your salvation that makes you the salt of the earth. It's your righteousness that makes you the salt of the earth. It's the godliness in your life that makes you the salt of the earth. When you lose that salvation, when you lose that righteousness, when you lose that godliness, you, the salt has lost its savor and it will not be cast out to be trodden under the foot of men. And then it says, Here, the light of the world, a city that is set on an hill, cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Now that he said you are the light of the world, he now says, let your light shine. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, not your bad works. Believers should not have any bad work, any bad day. Any bad time, any bad influence, the believers are supposed to have good words. Let your light so shine before men. This word, the little word, S-O, S-O. I don't mean state of us here, I mean the word so. So, it says, let your light so shine, so shine. What does that mean? It means that you should allow your light to shine to a very high degree, to a great extent, to an extraordinary level, having a higher quality of brightness. Let me look at that word, the word so. Look at this. Let your light so shine. Look at that word. Follow me through the Bible for that word so. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 24. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race Run all, but one receives the prize. Have you seen the people running the race? You know, some people are running moderately. Some people are running slowly. Some people are running gently. But some people run very hard and very fast. That's why it says in number 24, it says, so run, so run, in verse 24, that she may obtain, that is, go beyond the moderate, go beyond the slow ones, and so run, let your light so shine, verse 26, I therefore so run, he said, I want to win the crown. I want to get the reward, so I'm not running slowly, or gradually, or moderately, I so run, so that I will obtain. He said, therefore, I so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 19, verse 20, the word so, Acts chapter 19, verse 20, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. 
so mightily. You know, it, it could have said, the word of God grew and prevailed. Or it could have said, the word of God grew mightily and prevailed. But it said, the word of God grew so mightily and prevailed. Which means, it went beyond the normal territory. The word so, as you are rounding up the year. And you are saying, what will I do from now on for the rest of my life? He says, put some beam into your life. Some vitality in your life, some seriousness in your life, some dedication in your life, some extra in your life, so that your light will so shine before men, and they will see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33, the word soul. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. He could have said, let every one of you in particular love your wife. But he put the word so. He says, go the extra mile and so love your wife. Extra. Go beyond the ordinary. Go beyond the normal. Go beyond the moderate. Let everyone in particular so love his wife as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. In Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 1. Wherefore see. We also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. He could have said, We are compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses. But he said, No, it's more than that. We are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. As he looks at chapter 11 of Hebrews, so great. A cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every wage and the sin which does so easily beset us. The sin which beset us, that's normal. The sin which easily besets us, that's a little bit above normal. But the sin which so easily, so easily besets us, he puts the word so. For us to be more careful, for us to be more diligent, for us to be more sincere, for us to be more dedicated unto the Lord. Let's come back now to Matthew chapter 5. You will never forget that little word, so. The Lord Jesus Christ was teaching his people and he said, let your light so shine before men, not behind men. You know, there are some people, they say, you know, they will never tell how good I am because I never do my sin before them. But I do my sin behind them. They don't know how righteous I am. You know why? I never demonstrate my righteousness before them. I demonstrate my righteousness behind them. Jesus said, no. If you have it, leave it out and let it be before men. If you are faithful, not behind us, before us, in our presence. If you are gentle, not behind us, before us, in our presence. If you appreciate the doctrine, the teaching, and you're willing to live by it, live by it here, while we're here together, before us, not behind us. So we can praise God for you. So your teacher, your pastor can say, praise the Lord. These people, they are the light. They have accepted the word. They are living by the word. Leave that life out before us here. 
Don't say, I will go and live the life at home, behind me. No. Let your light so shine. They come in, that they may see. Let us see the faithfulness, the obedience, the righteousness, the holiness, the dedication, and the consecration. Let us see that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. We divide the message of three parts. Number one, living for Christ before men for God's glory. Living for Christ before men for God's glory. And then number two. Number two is laboring in Christ's ministry for God's glory. Laboring in Christ's ministry for God's glory. Number three, likeness for Christ's model of glorifying God. Come back to number one. Living for Christ before men. Come back to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. Let your light so shine before men. This word, this words before men. That's what we're looking at. Living for Christ before men for God's glory. We need to balance it up here. Before men. If the Pharisees, they were guilty of emphasizing before men only. Not before God. Before men. And it made them to demonstrate it. It was for show. It was for the praise of men. Before men. And they concentrated on that. They never thought about God. They only did it before men. And Jesus condemned that. Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. Take heed that ye do not your arms before men. That's the balance. That's the balance. Take heed that your concentration is not just to have the praise of men. The appreciation of men before men. Take heed that she do not show arms before men. To be seen of them. Otherwise, ye, uh, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. And look at Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. This was the error of the Pharisees. The only thing they wanted was for people to see. When the people were not there, they won't do anything good. When the people were there, then they get up and they do something to have the praise of men. That's bad. That has no recognition in heaven. Luke chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Ye are they will justify yourselves before men. That was their problem. Ye are they will justify yourselves before men. But God knows your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. If you concentrate only on making men see what you do, Watching the appreciation of men and watching the praise of men. You'll be like a Pharisee if you do not think about God first and say, I'm offering this to God. I'm doing this before God. I'm not doing it behind men. I'm doing it before men, but I'm doing it also before God. We're told in Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. We're reading from verse 25 and verse 26. These Pharisees, the only concern they had was before men. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 25, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! 
For ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the pattern, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. They just made the outward part beautiful. And then the inward heart was so corrupt and so dirty and so rotten and so unclean. Abomination in the sight of God. But you see, before men, they painted everything. Don't go to that bad extreme. Think about God first. Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17 verse 1 And when Abraham was 90 years old and 9 The Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him I am the Lord, I am the Almighty God Walk before me and be thou perfect God is number one Your salvation you are conscious of God every time. And you know that God is everywhere and is watching you. There are some eyes, big eyes watching you. And He knows your thoughts, He knows your mind, He knows your purpose, He knows your intention. Yes, your light will shine before men. But the bottom line, the reason, the goal, the reason for that is that they may glorify God. Your mind is on God, not on yourself. And so walk before me and be thou perfect. In Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, verses 74 and 75. Luke chapter 1 verse 74 That he will grant unto us That we have been delivered out of the hand of our enemies Might serve him without fear In holiness and righteousness before him In holiness and righteousness before him That is the first thing The priority of a real child of God Yes, your light will shine before men. But are you shining before the Almighty God? Because if it is limited to just show, and you are just doing it so that men may see, that's a Pharisee. But if you offer it to the Almighty God first, and then you are living in holiness and righteousness, before God all the days of your life, then you can now shine before men. In Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 4. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. According as He has chosen us in Him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him. Before Him. That we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Our concentration is on God. Our focus is on God. The desire of our heart is to say, Lord, I thank you for my salvation. I thank you for the forgiveness you have given me. And to show my gratitude before you, I'm going to live a life that pleases you. And then the corollary, the consequence of that, since you are not living in isolation, and you are living in the community, it will be before men, but first of all, before the Almighty God. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 23, Acts, chapter 23, I'm reading from verse 1, And Paul, earnestly beholding 
the council said, men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God, before God, before the Almighty God, before His all-seeing eyes. I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. You can see the priority, but now, because you have that dedication, because you have that consecration, that you are going to live a righteous life, a holy life before God, it will also show before men. Acts chapter 24 verse 16, God and men, God first. Acts chapter 24 verse 16. Hear me, do I exercise myself to have always a conscious void of offense toward God, number one? He is always number one. He has to be in the first place to have a conscious void of offense toward God and toward men. Now that you live a righteous life before God, then it also appears before men. Daniel chapter 6. In Daniel chapter 6, we're reading from verse 22. Daniel chapter 6, verse 22. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him, number one, for as much as before him, before God, innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Before him, before God, number one, and then before thee, a man, O king, I have not done any evil. Let your light so shine. Number one, before God. Let God see the reality, the genuineness, and the depth of that holiness that you profess, that you possess before the Almighty God. And then after that, before men, let your light so shine before me. This is the balance of each all. And then they will glorify, glorify God who is in heaven. We're looking at First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2, verse 12. In First Peter chapter 2, verse 12, having your conversation honest, among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evil doers, they may by your good words which they shall behold, by your good words which they shall see, by your good words which they shall observe, by your good works which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. That's the reason you have those good words that your light so shine before men, not behind men, that they may see your good works and then they will glorify your Father. They will not glorify you. They will not praise just you. They will not just say, we appreciate you. They will glorify your father who is in heaven if what the people see about you only make them think about you it has failed if all they see is that ah, isn't that man a great man and they never think about God he doesn't draw their hearts away from you unto God that's useless but let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and not glorify you, but glorify God the Father in heaven. Romans chapter 12. 
in Romans chapter 12, we're looking at verse 17. Romans chapter 12, verse 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil, provides things honest in the sight of all men. That's the challenge, and that is also the blessing that the Lord Himself has provided for every one of us. I come to point number two laboring in Christ's ministry for God's glory. Laboring in Christ's ministry for God's glory. Matthew chapter 5 again. We come back to Matthew chapter 5. Verse 16, that's what we're studying today. Laboring in Christ's ministry for God's glory. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify God your Father which is in heaven. He said, we should let our light shine, so that they will see something. What are they to see? Something tangible. Something visible. Something recognizable. Something observable. Something we can point to. Good words. That they may see your good works. Good words. We are saved to do good. In Ephesians chapter 2, the reason for our salvation is so that we may have good words. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of words, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. When you come into the hand of Christ, he recreates you. He remodels you, he reforms you, he refashions you, and then he releases you to go and do good. Christ never releases anybody to go and do evil. He releases you to go and do good. We are created by him, recreated, saved, and we are created unto good works. And then he tells us in that verse 10, which God has ordained before that we shall walk in them. In Second Timothy chapter three, good words. Second Timothy chapter three, verses sixteen and seventeen. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's talking about the whole Bible. Any part of the Bible that you study, it is given by inspiration of God. The Word of God, the totality of the Word, the completeness of the Word, from cover to cover, from the beginning to the very edge, the commandments, the promises, the provisions, the warnings, the examples, the illustrations, the prophecies, everything in the Word of God, all Scripture, without subtracting anything, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it is profitable, profitable for doctrine, Profitable for reproof, profitable for correction, profitable for correction, 
The word of God is supposed to correct us. When we're going the way of the flesh, the word of God is supposed to make us retrace our steps and come back to the way of the Spirit. The word of God is for correction and for reproof. And then it says for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good words. Every time you hear the word of God is to increase good works in your life. That the man of God, and of course that the woman of God, that the child of God, that the believer in Christ may be perfected, thoroughly furnished, thoroughly prepared, thoroughly trained unto good works. That's what the Word of God is to do in our lives. And then we're told in 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, from verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but of wood and of earth, some to honor, some to dishonor. You will be for honor. You will not be for dishonor. You know, what a shame when, you know, you have a child at home and then he goes to school and the people that see that child, they say, what kind of child is this? What's the name of your father? And then the child drops his head. It's a disgrace to the family, dishonor. If you're a member of the church and you profess to be saved, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Let's say you, you know, you find somebody and he's roaming about around GRA, Government Reserve Area. And then it's with a lady there, and they're doing some things that shouldn't, because there's no light there. The place is a little bit dark. And then a policeman is passing by, and then he sees them, what are you doing here? And then the man, you know, quickly, you know, readjusts himself. What's your name? And then he tells the name. You go to church? Yes. Which church? Don't mention our church. Don't mention our church if they catch you something like that. Just say, I go to one church in town. And then when he says, this is my church, then the policeman will look at him and say, aren't you a bad egg in that church? Dishonor. But you see, the Lord wants us to be unto honor. That's why it says in verse 21, If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. That's the reason we're sanctified for good works. That's the reason we come to a deeper relationship with the Lord for good works. That your light so shine before me that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 16. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, 
even our Father, which has loved us and has given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comforts your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. To establish us, which means it's not just that you accidentally did good work on one day, accidentally, just happened to be good, but no, continually, consistently, you are established in good works. And then it tells us in Titus chapter 2, Titus chapter 2, reading from verse 7, in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works, a pattern of good works, that other people can pattern their lives after you. And they can pattern everything they do after your lifestyle. Come back to Titus chapter 2 again. Titus chapter 2 verse 7. In all things, not in some things, all things. In all things, showing thyself a pattern. Uh, you know, believers love correction. There's some believers that hate correction. Believers love rebuke, scriptural rebuke. Believers love orientation. We're going astray. We're not following a good pattern. And then the teaching of the Bible says, Hey, watch it. That's wrong. Then you say, I'm sorry. And then you go in the right direction as a believer. The unbeliever is the one that says, Oh, you say that's not a good pattern. I'll do it again. You say that's an evil word. I'll do it again. That's an unbeliever. Whoever he is. In all things, showing thyself to be good, to be a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing of corruptness, gravity, sincerity, verse, four, verse 8. And it says, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary, of the contrary part, may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Verse 14, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Not zealous of bad works, not zealous of something that will destroy the doctrines of the Bible we teach in the church. But zealous of good works. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Titus chapter 3 verse 8. Titus chapter 3 verse 8, this is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. You see how many places you have in the New Testament, careful to maintain good works. When we're born again, that's what we dedicate our lives to. Verse 14. Let ours also learn to maintain good words for necessary uses, that they may not, that they may be not unfruitful. In First Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6. I'm reading from verse. 18, that they do good, that they be rich in good words, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, 
to be rich in good works, to have good works plenty in our lives. In First Peter chapter two, First Peter chapter two, verse twelve, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evil doers, they may by your good words. They may, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. And then in Second Corinthians chapter 9, good works. Every time, good works for a believer. That's the essence of being saved. That's the result of being saved. That's the joy of being saved. Once you are bad, for by grace now you are good. Once evil works issued out of you, but now you know Christ, good works are produced in your life. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that he always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good word see it all over the new testament good works all the time hebrews chapter 10 hebrews chapter 10 what do you mean from verse 24 hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Let us consider one another to encourage, to steer up, to stimulate, to influence, to provoke unto love and to good works. Help your neighbor to want to be good. Help the ministers to want to be their best. Help everyone you come across to want to go beyond this natural strength and do something that will benefit a community. You provoke them to love and to good works. It tells us in Hebrews chapter 13, verses 20 and 21, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead and not Jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work. Make you perfect in every good work. Make you perfect in every good work. To do his will, walking in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. We come to point number three. In point number three, likeness to Christ's model of glorifying God. Let's come back to Matthew chapter five. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine. Let, you understand that word? Let your light so shine. You know, sometimes you have a little boy. And then you put that little boy in between your two legs. And you're holding him. And he says, let me run. Release me to run. And sometimes a child is trying to write. And you think he cannot write well. And you're holding his hand. He says, let me write it myself. Let me. Don't restrict me. Don't hold my hand. Let me do it. And sometimes a person is facing a challenge 
and he wants to do something. And then you're saying, no, you cannot do this. No, this is tough. No, this is difficult. He said, let me alone. Let me do it. I can do it. Let me. Let your light so shine. Don't restrict it. Let go. Release it. The light is there. If you have Christ in you, He is the light of the world. Let Him shine through you. But you see, if you are holding on, and if you are restricting yourself, I am shy. I don't know how to help people. I am shy. I don't know how to come out and say, I can do this. I am shy. I don't know how to say, are you born again? I am born again. I'll give you my testimony. I am shy. Let your light so shine. Throw the shyness away. The things that tie you, the things that bind you, the things that restrict you, let your light so shine. You know, there are times, it's like two people, I read about them. Husband and wife had surely something happened. And each of them, they made themselves and they says, I will not, they said, I will not talk first. And the husband kept quiet. And the wife kept quiet. And then there were some interesting things that somebody should talk about. No, I made a decision. And I made up my mind, I will not talk first. And there was something funny that husband and wife should laugh about and the wife said no i said i will not i will not talk first if i talk first he will think i am weak and then the man there was something to laugh about and something to talk about and then the man said no i am a man i'm going to stand by my decision i will not laugh first and they were looking at themselves, and there was a laughter inside them. They will not let it out. There was a voice inside them. They will not let it out. I made up my mind. I will not talk first. And all that time, they were miserable. When you put to it in, I will not talk first. I will not act first. I will not smile first. I will not say anything false. Both of them were miserable. And then their little child was crawling. And it was crawling near the fire. I will not talk first. I will not shout first. And just as the child was about to get into the fire with the hand. The woman said, hey! And the wife said, okay, I'm going to talk now because you talk first. Somebody must talk first. Let your light so shine. Let's go and let God. All the bad decisions, I will not talk first. I will not smile first. I will not help first. I will not go first. I will not do anything in Tarak first. I make up my mind. What kind of mind is that? That will not want to obey the Lord. What kind of mind is that? That will not let go and let God. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. When Jesus came into this world, he permitted his light to shine. There was no restriction. It just shone everywhere. And that's why he says in John chapter 17 verse 4. John chapter 17. Verse 4, I have glorified thee on the earth, I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And that's the example the Lord wants us to follow. 
He wants us to shine. He wants our light to shine. He tells us in John chapter 8, verse chapter 15, verse 8, herein is my Father glorified, that she bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. The fruit is the good works. The Lord has taught us tonight in his word. And he has said, if you want to show that Calvary has an impact in your life, if you want to show that Calvary has an effect in your life, here is something you can do. Christ is living on the inside of your heart right now. Let him shine through you. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. My life will be a glory to God. My life will be a glory to God. I will not be a dishonor in the house of God. I said I will not be a dishonor in the house of God. Are you going to be a dishonor? You will honor the Lord. Why don't you stand up and say, Lord, I thank you for what you have taught me today. My light will shine. My light will shine. My light will shine. Let your light so shine. Let your light so shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Before men, not behind men. But don't make that your primary motive or motivation. Only to win the praise of men. Walk thou before God and, and be thou perfect. Walk thou before God and be thou perfect. That he might deliver us from the hands of our enemies and that we might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. Release yourself to do good you can as a child of God. Actually it takes a great effort to do bad. It takes a great effort to do evil. It takes a greater effort to frown than to smile. It takes a great honey to hurt somebody. It takes less planning, less effort, less energy to hell. Christ is living on the inside of you. And he is the light of the world. And he has now made you light. Let that light shine before men. Before men. Not behind them. Yes, God is your priority. God is number one. But then Jesus Christ himself has commanded us, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Your life will honor the Father. Your life will be a glory to the Heavenly Father.